In 2010, paleontologist Dan Sepka discovers a collection of bones in a storeroom of the Charleston Museum. When we pulled open the drawer and I saw this for the first time, it was just absolutely spectacular. Laying the bones out, Dan could see this was no ordinary find. It has this skull with these bony toothed jaws that almost looks like a crocodile. But it wasn't any kind of reptile. What Dan had discovered was the largest flying bird of all time. A new species they called Pelagornis sandersi. This massive element here is the humerus. This is the first bone of the wing skeleton, so it's equivalent to the upper arm bone in a human skeleton. This bone in particular is longer than my entire arm, and so we have a remarkably long wing. The giant bird's body was six feet long. With a wingspan of 24 feet, the largest bird alive today, the wandering albatross, could fit under just one of its wings. Pelagornis's wingspan rivaled that of a Harrier jump jet. By modern standards, it seems like this bird was too big to fly. How could it possibly have stayed airborne? A closer look at the bones provides Dan with a vital clue. Like flying birds today, its bones are hollow and super thin. The bone wall is about a millimeter thick, and so this animal would have been a very light weight for its size. There's less weight to support in flight. It rivaled the wingspan of a fighter jet, but this giant bird weighed only 48 pounds, less than a third of the weight of an adult human. Well, this bone, the scapula, is the equivalent to our own shoulder blade. And you can see it's, it's just so small. It's actually almost comically small. And this certainly reveals that this bird was not a high-powered flapper. Staying aloft for long periods was essential for Pelagornis. So how did Pelagornis manage such an extraordinary feat? Dan thinks the clue may lie with the modern master of ocean flight, the wandering albatross. Albatrosses make use of the way air flowing over the oceans can change speed. They perform a daredevil maneuver called dynamic soaring. Dan believes if Pelagornis was to survive out at sea, it must have done the same thing. So if we look at the waves, the wind above the waves is going more slowly than the wind higher up at a higher altitude above the waves, especially out on the open seas. And dynamic soaring birds can use this to their advantage. They swoop down to the ocean surface, then pull up at the last second. Pulling up gives a bird enough momentum to rise up and catch faster moving air currents. Flying in loops like this, Pelagornis would have been able to cover vast distances and snatch prey out of the water whilst burning very little energy. 27 million years ago, Pelagornis was living in this open sea environment. Pelagornis could probably travel across thousands of miles of ocean without much thought. 